just shut this down for the noise for the camera. Yeah. Okay. So thank you for coming today for this uh, red conference. Uh, which is the second one here in Amsterdam uh, as shown by the little cake uh, on the... Yeah, except... You, you oh, can, you third, can, you sorry. Can, you can tell that to the rest of the world, but for, for our Dutch audience we really aren't in Amsterdam here. Yes, uh, we are in Ams Am Amersfoort. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, this is a birthday today uh, because RED was uh, introduced uh, and released publicly uh, one year ago. So, so this is the first birthday. <laughs> uh, no, you, we won't uh, sing anything. <laughs> Maybe later. So, uh, I will pass that slide because I guess now everybody knows a bit more about me, so... <laughs> um, I guess this one also is pretty obvious for everyone now. <laughs> so basically RED is a <coughs> rebel-like uh, language, but open source, <coughs> while rebel is a proprietary software. Uh, I have updated this slide because uh, now Rebel is uh, abandoned uh, since uh, almost a uh, year and a half. Uh, I guess uh, this won't change, it seems. So we're pretty much on our own now. Um, so Rebel is uh, an interpreted language mainly used for scripting and it's paradigm neutral, so you can program in any style you want. And there's a default uh, layer in Rebel that uh, make it more easy to program in a classic imperative style and mix with functional style. And uh, one of the main uh, feature uh, of uh, Rebel is its very strong metaprogramming abilities also coupled with uh, dialecting abilities so the uh, capacity to build DSL domain specific languages uh, makes it a very interesting and very unique uh, language uh, the genealogy that's also pretty much known now. So RED is uh, mainly a derivative from uh, RIBOR, which itself is a derivative of LISP with a few more influences from other uh, mainstream languages. Uh, also RED aims at uh, addressing uh, a broader range of uh, application uh, than uh, all the mainstream languages. So, as you can see on this slide, uh, the C language uh, has a pretty broad uh, range of uh, natural uh, application uh, as Ruby and Rebel, but uh, C is addressing the lower level part while Ruby and Rebel are addressing <coughs> the upper uh, part of the abstraction level scale. ASM means? Similar. Oh, okay. ASM assembler. Yeah. So red uh, <coughs> red uh, purpose is to address uh, all the all the abstraction levels, uh, which is not possible by itself by a single programming language. So the secret uh, weapon is to use a lower level language, which is fully integrated inside red, uh, working as a dialect. And uh, the purpose of this uh, underlying language is to support the low-level programming. So with this combination, it is possible to address the whole abstraction level. 
the language tag. So red uh, basically compiles to red system, which uh, itself is compiled to native code. Uh, the main uh, difference is uh, the main difference between the two. Uh, native code does that mean assembler? What does native code mean assembler? Yes, it means a machine code which is directly uh, interpreted by the CPU. But machine code is that lower level than assembler? It's the same thing. The machine code is a binary oh. uh, representation, while the assembler is the textual representation for humans. Okay, it's, it's the same platform thing. independent. Though. Yes. Okay. So the main difference uh, between a red and red system uh, can be seen by uh, looking at how values are stored in memory. Uh, in red, values are stored uh, boxed in a boxed way, so uh, some more information is added for every value. Uh, while for red system, it's like C, so any value. Uh, in an integer or whatever it is, uh, is directly stored without any additional information. So this is the main, uh, the root uh, difference between uh, the two languages, uh, giving different uh, features and different abstraction layers. And the direct uh, consequence of that is that uh, red system is much faster by at least an order of magnitude from uh, red. So Red System, currently thanks to Kai's uh, benchmarks, uh, so it confirms it confirms that uh, Red System currently runs at almost C performance. So we are we are almost at twice, just twice slower currently than C for integers, but maybe you have a. On, on, so, only because uh, the C compilers optimize. Yes, uh, yes, we, we are comparing uh, this to unoptimized uh, C code. And the, the red system compiler is uh, as of yet unoptimized. So for uh, for generic integer operations and flow control, it seems to be really as fast as uh, unoptimized GCC. And there, there seems to be a, a, a gap that it's twice uh, slower uh, for floating point, but uh, we're not sure yet because we haven't measured accurately enough yet. Anyway, uh, Red System and uh, Red are currently in the bootstrapping phase, uh, so uh, they, they don't uh, support yet uh, an architecture that will uh, allow coding optimizations. That will be once we get out of the bootstrapping uh, stage. So red uh, should be also pretty fast. Uh, probably this is very rough estimation because we don't have yet the red compiler so uh, it probably will be around 25 uh, times slower than C. Uh, knowing that red will work as a script scripting language uh, it will make read one of the fastest uh, scripting languages um, pretty close to Lua uh, Lua will be probably a bit faster because it's uh, simply a language and it has a very uh, efficient uh, implementation uh, but uh, red will be close uh, behind uh, Lua and uh, mm -hmm. should be much faster than uh, most of uh, existing uh, scripting languages. Lua, Lua seems to be uh, 30 times slower than optimized C in most benchmarks. So if you uh, reach the goal of, uh, of 20 times C, then you'd be faster than Lua. Yes, uh, uh, it will, um, the real uh, performance in the end will depend of, uh, on how much uh, part of Red uh, is directly compiled to red system and uh, native code, and uh, how many, what part will be run by a runtime? Right, because Lua, Lua is still a virtual machine interpreter, so we'll see that uh, soon. Uh, level of completion currently, uh, red system is pretty much advanced uh, and uh, in better state. Uh, in, for red, the runtime is almost done. Still, some work for on it, and the compiler not yet ready. 
to sum up the goals. Um, we have seen that already last time, but just as a reminder, uh, red should uh, fulfill all these uh, goals once uh, ready. <laughs> Ubiquity is a nice one. Uh, ubiquity, yes. Uh, that's uh, something we already support pretty well. Uh, it has to do with the license also. Uh, the uh, license is open, it's BSD yeah. license. Yeah, I mean, so. that, that is why you choose to have such a liberal license. Uh, I, I choose to have the uh, liberal license to not restrict the usage yeah. of uh, red to even commercial applications so. because if i understood it right you want to allow people to write red programs without even mentioning that they yes. use red yes okay yes the, i don't have a problem with that i'm, I'm happy as long as people yeah. are using red but i mean the, the reason you choose for for that was because you wanted to spread everywhere uh yes as uh, many places as possible mm -hmm. yeah Okay, just a few a reminder, another reminder for uh, a few main free features of uh, Red. Uh, so it's uh, pretty much the same as Rebel. Um, it uh, already uses the same syntax and the semantic rules will be pretty much the same. Uh, it will also feature, of course, a strong DSL and dialecting support. And uh, the main difference with Rebel is that Red is uh, compiled while Rebel is interpreted. Um, another feature is uh, that uh, for Red, uh, that is that it uh, is statically typed. Uh, but I've put uh, this in italic because uh, the more I advance and the more I think uh, this is not the right choice to do. Um, I mean, uh, the right choice uh, today will probably be to make something, uh, a mix of uh, static and dynamic uh, typing. I think that's good news, <laughs> because I was also a bit... Uh... The, main, uh, the main reason is that a uh, static, uh, purely statically typed language uh, needs uh, to be handy. Uh, to use needs a very uh, powerful type inference engine uh, which okay. can be built because uh, as shown uh, by other languages like Scala for example uh, you can make a, long a statically compiled language very uh, practical and very handy yeah. to use like, uh, uh, like OCaml for example a very heavy yes. inference engine yes. uh, but uh, you have a price to pay for that yeah. and the price is the compilation speed uh, and as shown uh, again and demoed by Scala, compilation uh, speed are catastrophic uh, in Scala. But it's not a problem in Scala because you're doing only static compilation. And in red, we want to be able to JIT compile also. Uh, so uh, having a type inference engine uh, will uh, slow down the compiler too much for a JIT compiler. So we will we will need then to build two compilers, one for the JIT and one for the static compiling with two different architectures and two different approaches. And I think uh, it's, uh, it will be a waste of time and uh, the, I more and more think that uh, the best strategy will be to make a um, mix of uh, dynamic and statically type engine. Mm -hmm. uh, basically it will work like in uh, Rebel, you just uh, uh, define some functions. Uh, if you add a data type to arguments and uh, local variables, it will be statically compiled. If you don't add them, it will be dynamically uh, typed. So uh, some part of it will include some runtime switches and uh, runtime resolution for types. So slowing down but giving you more uh, flexibility at the language layer. So you, the programmer will be able to choose which way he wants to code uh, using flexible code or using fast code. Mm -hmm. 
That's good because I, I was also afraid that you, it would be very hard to reach the, the same dynamic level as, uh, as Red Bull. With so there are several so solutions for to, to reach that, to emulate the dynamic level of uh, Red Bull. Uh, one, for example, would be to use a, a generic type like a variant uh, to um, address those dynamic uh, features, but uh, it's not very elegant. Uh, it's not a very elegant solution, and I think that the uh, best uh, solution will be to mix uh, both. And also, I uh, forgot to add. Um, um, a chart from uh, TOB uh, index which shows uh, the trend between dynamic and uh, statically typed language and the trend uh, on the last five or ten years shows that uh, people are hesitating between the two they are going both uh, lines are going up and down always uh, people are hesitating because uh, Sometimes you need performance and speed and uh, security of a statically typed system and sometimes you just want flexibility. So, so it, it changes, it changes always, uh, the trend change. And I think we can address both needs in one uh, language uh, at the same time. Letting the programmer choose which way he want to use on a function level uh, basis. Uh, also uh, a very uh, important feature for a programming language now is to be able to integrate easily in uh, existing solution <coughs> or existing uh, languages. So uh, being embeddable is a very important feature as shown by uh, the Lua language. So we'll uh, try to distribute uh, a RED as a shared library. Also, <clears throat> another very important part that it's not that is not addressed by uh, Rebel is the concurrency support, both uh, task uh, parallelism and data parallelism. So basically, we'll use what is uh, best uh, today. The state of the art of uh, concurrency all handling is uh, currently to use actor and parallel collections. So. Uh, Red currently runs on Windows, Linux, um, Mac, Mac OS, uh, Salable. <coughs> uh, we have a uh, half working port on uh, FreeBSD. What's, what's the status of that? Because it's quite old already. I don't know because uh, I don't have the code for uh, FreeBSD. It's in the Andreas uh, hands oh. and uh, he hasn't released uh, any oh. code for now. So. We, we should ask him. Yeah. IQ is not yet uh, started, but he was, uh, was requested uh, by several uh, users. No. Uh, on the embedded uh, market, we are already supporting Android uh, devices, uh, but only as a uh, raw binary. So we are not yet able to uh, call the Android a API. So for that, we need to build a bridge with Java to be able to uh, call directly the whole API, but we uh, red uh, red system is already running on uh, Android, iOS same issue. Uh, we need a bridge with uh, Objective C for accessing to access the whole API. Uh, also, I've added the uh, Raspberry Pi because I believe, <coughs> uh, as shown by the frenzy day, <laughs> on. Uh, Raspberry Pi uh, release, first release, uh, that uh, it will become a very important uh, part and uh, I really like uh, the philosophy of this uh, product so um, we will support it as much as possible as soon as we can get our hand on one board which uh, seems to be very <laughs> difficult these days. <laughs> Uh, I need one too. You want one too, okay. <laughs> we'll order two then. Uh, but uh, as we already support uh, the ARM processor, uh, the current RED system should uh, run and compile uh, correctly on Raspberry Pi. So we already support it, but we don't have a board to test it in uh, reality. Uh, also, Arduino boards are very interesting target, but uh, things are evolving uh, quite uh, rapidly these uh, 
these last months. Um, uh, the RVR8 uh, board are very, very popular. So I think we should continue to work on that port and, uh, and support them. But on the, for the 32-bit um, board, uh, Arduino seems to be moving for, uh, on the Cortex uh, M3 uh, processor, which is an ARM processor. Uh, so the RVR architecture won't be used anymore, it seems, by Arduino board. So I'm not sure if it's w it is worth it to implement the 32-bit uh, support. Maybe we'll move directly to the Arduino Duo board when it will be available and uh, implement uh, Cortex M3, M3 support. Does also, it, does the it run on uh, field programmable gate arrays? Like GNU radio? On uh, Gator is not uh, yet, but uh, we could add uh, that uh, too. We could also add FPGAs, for example, as a, mm -hmm. as a possible target. Uh, that will be interesting too. Uh, we also need to <coughs> see how the Raspberry Pi uh, platform and board will uh, evolve because at uh, $25, uh, it's the same price as the Arduino RVR8 board. So uh, we'll see how things evolve because it could uh, easily re replace fully the Arduino board on many applications and many usage. So we need to see. It seems that Arduino boards are more developed to be a yes. building block, and, and, and the Raspberry Pi seems more to be a small computer system. Well, uh, the Raspberry Pi is uh, just a, a board. Uh, a bare board. Yeah. You don't have anything with that. Yeah, but, you mean, is, it, is it designed as a building block like Arduino? Uh, yes, part, partially, uh, mm -hmm. because you have a general I.O. Uh, connection available mm -hmm. and uh, this is the main uh, um, um, purpose of uh, Arduino boards is to have a lot of uh, general purpose uh, I.O. connectors okay. to be able to build and connect so anything you have on a it. System bus, so to say that. Yes, it's uh, it's it's the same price, but uh, but just uh, uh, several order of magnitude mm -hmm. more uh, faster and better. Uh, also, we'll need to target a few VMs uh, like GVM and uh, JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript <coughs> is getting faster and faster every day, so it's. Uh, it's uh, more and more an important um, target to support. Uh, for IVM2, the VM in uh, used by Flash, uh, uh, made by Adobe, I think it's uh, VM, less and uh, less... Is it Action Script Virtual Machine? Yes, yes. Uh, I think uh, it uh, probably is not worth uh, supporting it. But wasn't this what uh, Topaz, uh, what Topaz, Gabriel Topaz, wanted with Topaz? Topaz is uh, <coughs> compiling for JavaScript currently. Yeah, but I, I understood that he also wanted to export it to all kinds of languages. Yes, yes, he, yeah. he, Gabriel wants to make it a general uh, uh, compiler to be able to uh, uh, target any other platform and real CPUs too. Uh, but currently, it's uh, JavaScript only. Um, but you are you don't you are not planning to use Topaz for that or something. Uh, we'll see, maybe, okay. maybe. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure yet. It's not uh, it's not on the short term uh, roadmap, so I can't say. But uh, maybe. But you are not. But I don't see an export to Topaz. Uh, <laughs> it's not uh, required. Uh, it will be probably the other way around. <coughs> so probably Topaz will compile to Red System or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we'll see that when uh, Gabriele will have yeah, more time. Yeah, because Topaz to itself is a higher level. Yes, level. exactly. And Topaz lack, uh, lacks the lower layer part, so Red System will be probably a very good fit for for that. Okay. Uh, the .NET platform, uh, I'm, I'm not sure it's, uh, it's still uh, relevant. <coughs> Because uh, Microsoft is uh, changing things uh, rapidly on Windows 8 and uh, uh, native code is still uh, there. Uh, the platform uh, has not moved to a full, fully managed uh, code. So we don't know yet what will be the face of uh, .NET. 
and how it will uh, evolve. So we'll see if it's uh, still relevant or if Microsoft uh, still allows for future version of Windows to run directly in native code. So in that case, we, we don't need uh, that, uh, that port. And also for Windows Mobile? Um, I don't know yet. I know very little about the Windows Mobile platform, so I don't know exactly uh, if it's possible to run native code on, uh, on it or not. I don't know. The same like Android, because it runs on both sides. Uh, Android, you can run uh, native code on Android. So the bootstrapping. Fox. Red is sorry. Red is a bootstrap platform. So uh, Red uh, is uh, aimed to be compiled in Red itself. So to start the process, uh, we need the first uh, other language to build the first compiler. So it's Rebel, and uh, that's what we are building currently is point one, so Red and Red System compiler written in Rebel. The second step is uh, to rewrite Red System in Red, and the last step is to rewrite the Red compiler directly in Red itself. Once we reach that, we will have a V1, first version, full version of Red, with all so, the features. So the, the third step is that it is being written in itself? Yes. Okay. So to be able to rewrite, rewrite it yeah. in itself, uh, uh, the language itself and the first implementation needs to be mature enough for that. And uh, for that it needs the step one and step two to be, to be done and finished. Uh, a few metrics from the project. So you ask for the license, it's a BSD. But which? Exactly uh, it's which uh, currently it's a free close BSD. Uh, but uh, we will probably move to a two close or something like that to remove because it's it. more liberal. Yes, too. it's even more liberal. In fact, there's the BSL uh, license, which is uh, very appropriate. But you mean it's the, the Bison license? Uh, boost, boost software. Oh, boost. Oh, boost yeah. library okay. software li license, yeah. which is uh, quite uh, adapted for Red and what we want to do with it. But it's uh, very. Um, it's not very well known, so everybody knows about BSD and GPL, mm -hmm. but not uh, much. Oh, so you have a more <laughs> problem if you choose yes, that Exactly, exactly. So okay. for now, we sting with BSD because yeah. uh, that's very clear for everybody. And you can't dual license it. Yes, it's already dual license. Uh, in fact, the runtime part yeah. of Red uh, is in is under BSL. Oh, okay. Uh, so the source code, uh, currently we have uh, reached uh, almost uh, 900 uh, commits on the uh, repository. Uh, we have a lot of tickets, but um, almost all done and closed. Uh, the unit test framework uh, have, has reached almost uh, 12,000 uh, unit tests. Uh, the whole system, uh, the whole source size of uh, red system uh, Uncompressed is a uh, 300, a uh, little more than 300 uh, kilobytes. Uh, we have also reached uh, 7,000 uh, line of code for the Red System compiler, and the linker hasn't moved much since uh, last time, so we are still uh, at 2,000 line of do code. Do you do you celebrate it when you have? Lots of luck, or no? I celebrate when I uh, when I can uh, <laughs> when you remove. Say that you removed. Uh, remove. Yeah. So I, I try to not uh, add to too many lines of code. So uh, yeah. the linker hasn't moved much. The compiler has uh, uh, code base has uh, grown uh, quite a lot last uh, last months, mainly because of the ARM port. Uh, the short-term roadmap is to finish uh, the red runtime as soon as possible uh, to be able to build the compiler. So for the compiler part, the lexer is always the uh, implemented. So we need just the parser and the code emitter. Uh, the so when you have built the parser, I can use red instead of rebel for parsing. Uh, no, no, it's uh, the parser in this case is not the parse command. It's oh. uh, the 
the tool that will take the output of the of the Lexa yeah. and that will do the translation. It, it's the internal part. Yeah, it's the compiler itself, oh, in okay. fact. So uh, the Red System code emitter will be very simple because we don't have to emit to a very low level CPU like uh, machine code. <coughs> we will emit uh, Red System code, source code directly. So this part should be pretty simple and pretty straightforward. So um, we are not that far from the for a working uh, first version of the Red compiler built in Rebel. Also in the short term roadmap, short term means three months. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to get uh, the bridge uh, up for Java uh, because Android is very quickly becoming <laughs> more and more used everywhere and uh, every day uh, there's something like more than 3 million new Android devices activated yeah. so it's huge especially and the tablets at the moment eh? everything yeah. the the tablets, tablets yes are they tablets really selling now yes, yes yes in because Asia, I, I in read Asia. last week that they still talk about the iPad market and not yes. the tablet market it depends on where in the US oh. say uh, the iPad is still uh, Dominating, but uh, in other parts of the world, it's not uh, like that. Uh, I especially in that Asia, the I iPhone was also dominating, yes. but not. Anymore. But I heard something that's like 200 million Android devices or 600 or something. Yeah, like I think it. I don't know, but it's, it's uh, growing very, yeah. very fast. Yeah. Three million new activation every day, oh, every really? day. Yeah. So it's it's really huge. It's faster than everything. But I'm, I'm uh, wondering how that long it will remain an Android market because you see that the other companies are now looking at other operating systems because they don't feel safe with Android. Yes, but uh, nobody can keep up with uh, three million activation yeah. by a uh, day. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we are but stuck for with. For example, Bada from Samsung. Yes, uh, it's a Tizen, if you know what I mean. Uh, yes, uh, uh, the US Bada. incarnation of yeah, Bada the, the, also. Ty, no, no, Tyson is from Intel. It's the Intel Linux. I haven't heard uh, if I'm about right. it. Or the Nokia Linux. Or uh, they, they Nokia is combining it. Bada is also... Uh, uh, passé. The, the Samsung is also working on something new. Oh, okay. In combination with Intel. I, I believe it is Tyson. So... Uh, it's for the other conference. Uh, uh, this wasn't a uh, very um, high priority a year ago when I started uh, working and releasing uh, RED. Uh, but today, uh, every day is uh, more and more important and uh, higher priority. So we need to get so it. You are run. missing now 3 million activations a day. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we need to get that work as soon as possible and as fast as possible because uh, uh, we can't. Uh, miss that uh, market. Yeah, it's just how, not how possible. What will this look like, uh, this API? Will it be a subset of the Java API? Or uh, no, I we'll cannot do, imagine it. Uh, uh, right we'll, do, we'll do it uh, the rebel way, or the red way now, uh, which means uh, build a dialect for each uh, part of uh, the API and uh, use that uh, dialect, so uh, DSL, yes. uh, for each part. So we won't have to uh, mess up with the whole uh, object uh, hierarchy of okay. uh, Java. Uh, we will uh, have something very simple and very easy, which should be a big plus for Red on that platform. Mm -hmm. And also show uh, to Android programmers that are used to Java that things can be done in uh, easily, <laughs> much more easily and much more rapidly. Yeah. Since, uh, since one or two years, uh, Android has uh, a native API. Yeah. And the Java yes. API is probably still more extensive. Yes. But it should be possible to start on bindings right now. Yes, uh, there's the native uh, SDK yeah. uh, which uh, from uh, Google, which uh, allows to access a lot of uh, uh, hardware and things in the uh, Android API. But one thing remains <laughs> out of the native SDK is the GUI. GUI. Yeah. That's the main yeah. big missing thing. We can't, uh, we can't do uh, without that. So we need the GUI access, and for that we need the Java bridge. Mm. So, so to have a, a GUI app on Android, you need to have yes. a Java bridge. Or the whole GUI in, uh, on Android is built on Java, in Java. 
with Java on Java. So and they want to remain it that way, or 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 is it just? I don't know. Uh, it's uh, there's no sign of changes for all that. Okay. The problem is the the GUI is a very large interface, mm -hmm. and it's very object oriented. So it's it's similar to the uh, the syllable GUI uh, mm -hmm. system and the Haiku GUI system. Mm -hmm. They're they're the main API, and they're uh, object oriented in a, in a weird language on mm -hmm. syllable and Haiku C plus plus and on Android in Java, so you simply can't get at it from the C level. So if you want to, to bind it from anything else, you need a very extensive C wrapper around it. So that will be the, the job of the bridge to uh, set up a kind of uh, very simple uh, messaging protocol to be able to uh, instantiate a Java object and uh, call the their method and uh, retrieve return values and things like that and also uh, receive events from the java side to the red side so it will be one generic bridge that will be able to include and use in every android applications uh, the planning this is the all the planning i've left it uh, like that <laughs> for now uh, just to show what we have done and not done. <laughs> uh, so we've planned that uh, in October we'll uh, have uh, alpha of uh, Red compiler. It's still not the case, but we are now very close to that. Uh, the beta of uh, ARM support uh, was almost in October. It was available, available in November and a stable version in December. So that was the main, one of the main uh, reasons we delayed other part of the project, it was to finish that uh, part. Uh, the idea is not there yet too. Um, and same from the, for the rest. We basically, we delayed uh, many of these um, schedules uh, by two, up to two months to three months. Uh, because we implemented uh, fully the ARM support and also added um, another feature to the Red System language which is uh, floating point uh, number support uh, which took much more time than uh, we expected first so it's quite nice to have it's nice to have but uh, it wasn't on the roadmap for, for Red for it's not uh, required to build Red in fact Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, a lot of uh, followers were requesting that to be able to play with some bindings which require uh, floating point support mm -hmm. like for example uh, OpenGL. Okay. So the roadmap needs to be uh, mixed between technical, purely technical uh, requirements and uh, some marketing requirements or user requirements because we need to, we have a community that's growing and uh, we need to also support their needs. Yeah, so we have democracy. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, Some mirror, mirror, uh, 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 mirror uh, A kind, uh, kind dictatorship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As most uh, open source software uh, project. Uh, so the channels are pretty well known now and that part was for Red System, a uh, focus on Red System features, so that hasn't changed since last time. The only change was the addition of two uh, new uh, data types, which are Float and Float32, for supporting double precision and single precision uh, floating point numbers. Uh, compiler directives are still there, despite uh, flames of uh, some people <laughs> <laughs> coming to the red project uh, the low level cpu support are, are not uh, uh, implemented yet because they are mainly required by the arduino board so as we haven't much advanced advanced on the arduino implementation uh, we haven't implemented yet those parts uh, the link uh, hasn't changed since last time. So the yellow world is still still the same, simple and straightforward. Maybe we can 
just skip these slides because there are not much, nothing new there. Uh, share library, uh, import declaration, okay, nothing new. That was for the CPU low level features support for building mainly for board support and also for people wanting to, for example, uh, implement a driver, a low level driver or a kernel module or even a full uh, operating system starting from uh, bare metal. Uh, the keyword list hasn't changed much and the addition uh, we have uh, implemented switch and case uh, these two are now available and the other ones are not yet there that's all for this presentation <laughs> so Kai what's next do we well I just got into uh, Alt Me. Um, 